Are you getting the best instruction from your crew, your sensei, whoever's teaching you martial arts? Today I'm going to give you five things that teachers should absolutely be doing if they are going to be maximizing your striking level. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Thanks for joining me again today. Yesterday we had big news. The channel hit 200,000 subscribers. Super excited. So much positive feedback to everybody who commented, and I appreciate all of you. And I made this episode today because I basically wanted to go, I'm trying to be the best instructor I can for you guys. And even though I'm not there in person for most of you, I can direct you to what you should be looking for. But do keep in mind that you can book Zoom sessions with me where I can analyze your training footage and give you feedback, meet with you then, and we can just have a good conversation about what's working, what's not, and then I can actually see you in front of me throwing the techniques, and I can help you along the way to progressing your skill set. Right now in September, I'm pretty much fully booked, but I will be opening up some more spaces fairly soon in my schedule, so there'll be a link down below where you can go look at my booking platform and get yourself a private lesson. So five things that your instructor should be doing if he wants to maximize the skill set of everybody who comes into his gym. This doesn't mean this person does different than that person does different than that person. I think this is a pretty good blueprint on how to help your students grow and reach their potential. The downside of this for instructors is it takes lots of energy, extra energy. You don't teach everything the exact same. So I will explain that in a second because I almost contradicted myself there. Uh, from what I said previously, but you'll get it. You'll get it in a second. So the very first thing when somebody comes in to a class, very first class, first month of class, is teach them the basics and teach them how to do it correctly. That's all you're trying to do within that first month. You don't want to stray too far from those basics and you don't want to teach them anything outside the ordinary because it will form bad habits. So if you are brand new to fight sports, and you're wanting to maximize your skill set as quick as possible, you should be looking for an instructor who is going to do just that. If you want to just follow along with one of my tutorials where I go through the basics, I'll put a link up there. This is for beginners, and this will help you just dial in those striking finer details. Now, once your instructor has got those basics down and you feel like, okay, I can throw every shot really well, I understand a couple basic defenses for each shot, then he can go on or she can go on and teach you a little bit of variety. You might be going, what does he mean by variety? Well, a different number of ways to throw the same shot or block the same shot. Case in point, how do I throw a hook? Do I come with my thumb up? Maybe they teach you that. Initially, they go, okay, thumb up, thumb up every time. After you've got that down, then they might say, okay, here are some options. Now we can come with that thumb facing towards you or even extend the punch and come with the thumb facing down. They'll start teaching you these little variations of the same technique and hopefully give you the ability to test them out and see what works for you. Now, after they have done that, they should be looking to specialize your particular style. What is gonna work best with you? When I'm holding pads for somebody, I constantly ask them, I get feedback. I see them throw a hook and then I say, okay, try thumb down or try thumb towards you. And they'll throw it and they'll throw it and I'll go, okay, what are you feeling when you throw it? And sometimes they'll go, okay, well that feels really good, but this one kind of hurts my wrist and I can feel the difference in the power. So I say, okay, I want you to eliminate this from your arsenal for now. And we're just going to go with that. You start to specialize somebody's style so they can really create their own way of doing things and not copy necessarily what the instructor likes to do. I love to block shots like this. It works really well for me when I'm sparring, working away. I see a shot come, block it. Sort of loads up from my counter. But some people will hate that. And they might want to go, okay, every time he throws a hook, I'm going to fade back. But I don't like that personally. Does that mean I shouldn't teach it? No. I show people the chance to try it out or I give them the chance to try it out. And then we start going, ooh, that's looking really good for you. And you over there, you're crushing that style. And then I start telling them that. And from there, they're going to create their own style and specialize their skill set. And remember, this episode today is not to necessarily teach you techniques, but it's to let you know what you should be looking for in your instructor. And if you go, ooh, I'm not getting these things right now, maybe it's time to find somebody new or to look for a new gym or new training partners or something. 
you might need to change it up. Now, the next thing that we are going to teach the students to do, or instructors should be teaching their students to do, is how to throw things wrong. Remember before at the beginning, I said we're going to teach them how to do it right, but then we're also going to how to teach them to do it wrong. Well, this is where that comes in. So we've gone through all the other initial three stages. Everything's looking good. Everything's looking solid. I'm going, oh, I'm really happy with that guy. He has great technique. He's understanding his style. But now I'm going to show him how to break rules. Example, when somebody comes into class and I say, okay, we're going to go uppercut to body hook. I'm going to say load up, execute, hand back to the head to protect, and then down to the body. But once they start getting really good, I might say, okay, you know what we're going to do? We're just going to go like this. Arm, arm, boom, boom. Hoom, hoom. So many things wrong in that. My head is totally exposed. I didn't use my legs. It's just pretty much an arm punch. Why would I possibly teach that? Well, as we get more advanced, we can start doing things wrong because we understand what the threats are. I understand that if I come here and I see this guy loading up, I'll pull back and protect my head. But if I don't see them reacting, I know they're probably going to block up high and I'll be able to come down here. But the time between punches needs to be very short. So we can teach people to do things wrong, and sometimes it works for them. And if your instructor is not doing this yet for you, you have not reached that next level where you can start doing things like, oh, I'll throw a low kick with no pivot. This sometimes is very good because it allows you to stay in that tighter range. If you're blocking shots, you can still counter with your low kick without doing a full pivot and hitting them with your knee. So many little mistakes, mistakes that we can make that actually help increase your striking skill set. But again, if an instructor is showing you these things too early, it's going to create bad habits. Only people who have really, not I'm not going to say mastered, but really locked in how to do things right, only they should be then going, oh, these are ways that I can utilize techniques wrong and still be very effective with them, become more dangerous. The last thing that we're going to talk about today, which an instructor should be doing for you, is to challenge you to do things outside your comfort zone. So very often, we will have people in the gym, let's say in sparring, who are better than most of the other guys. And if they are so worried about always winning in class and being the best person in the gym, they're not going to challenge themselves. They're not going to try new things. They're going to stick to what really works and they're not going to improve much. But a good instructor should come over and go, look at this round against him. I want you to go southpaw. I want you to change it up. I want you to challenge yourself. Yes, you're not going to do as well, but there might be a time in a fight or in the future when you have to go southpaw. Or they might say something like this time, instead of using the long guard, or the longer arms away from the head, lots of bouncing, which you usually do, I want you to go to that tight shell. I want you to use that Dutch guard and have a more of an in tight fight. An instructor should do this to make you better. But again, he won't do this too early on because it'll just make people panicked. If you're trying to learn something and they're pushing you too early outside your comfort zone, it's just going to be awful. They're not going to have fun. They're probably going to leave. Not good as an instructor and not good for the student. So if we can go through this particular order, and really help students become their best version. You are doing very well as an instructor. And students, if your instructor is doing this for you, you can just big check mark. I'm at the right gym. I have a great instructor. Fantastic. So there you have it, guys. Those are my views on how to help people improve very fast and what instructors should be giving to you. If you enjoyed today's episode, please give it a like. Get subscribed. If you have not already, we just passed 200,000 subscribers. 300,000 is the next goal. Hopefully, we will get there by this time next year, if not sooner. As always guys, train hard. I will see you back here soon for another video.